Shh, listen, listen very carefully. Do you hear that? That's called singing. Hello you Dirty Potters, how are you today? Today we're going to do a kiln opening video, but this one's a little bit special because I just changed my elements, which means that some of my colors are going to come out a little bit different. So today you guys get to see those sexy new elements. I'm wearing gloves because I jumped the gun and my kiln's still too hot, so, so in order to touch my pottery right now because it's still like 200 degrees, I'm going to have to use gloves. I can't touch it with my beautiful human skin. Maybe it's cool enough to start touching with my- no, ow, no, no. And I think you guys know how this works by now. We're gonna put stuff in a bad pile, we're gonna put stuff in a good pile, and we're gonna tear from the lowest to the best thing that I thought came out of the kiln. And then I'm gonna tell you which one I like the most. Your job in the comments down below is to tell me which one you like the most. Do I still have to wear my glove? To Oh, no, we're good. We're good now. We're okay now. And let's talk about this abomination first. This is most likely the worst thing that came out of the kiln. And mind you, everything in this kiln is going to be hoggy porcelain. But I really like the bottom. Like the bottom looks like nothing's wrong with it. This is my floating blue. But the very top, for some strange reason, didn't stick. And the new kiln elements have changed a lot of the work being done inside of my kiln itself. So. This is, this is going a little bit faster. I will admit I've been kind of doctoring my glazes to make sure they come out extra blue and whatnot, adding a little bit more cobalt carbonate. But that being said, for some reason this didn't stick. I think I'll have to put a more even layer on it or more, uh, maybe some more water inside my glaze. But I've basically been making myself extra, extra thick so that it can survive under those awful elements. So this is the first one. This is my floating blue on a porcelain. It was gonna be a really nice cup, and now it's a piece of garbage! But I do hear a lot of you down in the comments below, like, oh, try again! So I guess we'll try again, you needy. This one here has kind of the same problem. Now this is a massive amount of crawling, but um, it was an experimental glaze, so I kind of knew it would do this. I just wanted to see what would happen if I put it on a porcelain base, especially a really high quality porcelain base. But the outside came out Gorgeous. This came out really, really well. This is exactly how I like my floating blue on the outside. I really wish I would have just done the whole thing in floating blue from the get-go, because this inside is completely different from the outside. This is floating blue, and this is my experimental glaze that I've been trying to develop. So this this is really, really runny. It's a cell sore base mixed in with a couple more fluxes, a couple more carbonates and oxides for color. It's supposed to be like a grayish dark thing. It didn't work out too well, it turned way too dark. But damn, I really wish I would have just done this to the entire thing. Oh well, you're going to the garbage now. This here was a bowl from the last kiln opening, and it's a beautiful, beautiful swirl with clear and a bunch, a couple, probably about three different types of clays, to be honest with you. The problem is I put the red way too thick on the inside, and it turned out to pit a lot. It pitted the hell. I'll, I'll eat out of this. I don't mind eating out of this. I've never had any health problems from eating from pitware, but I don't want my customers to be worried, so I'm basically gonna eat out of this myself because I think this is a gorgeous amount of blood red, and it's it. Th this is one of the pieces that I keep even though it's ruined, just for me, because dang, that that's just gorgeous right there. This one here is probably the last of the messed up cups, and I only say messed up because it didn't cling to the top as much as I wanted it to. The inside's fine, the inside looks great. It's just this rim and this portion right here, and I know what happened to it. I got a little bit of grease on the top, and it acted as a refractory, and it didn't really mold in with the clay because I'm a bad person. Do not eat fried chicken and then touch your bisqueware without washing your hands first. It is stupid and you will ruin your stuff. But I am definitely going to retry on this. It just takes a simple dip one good time and then I'll let it dry upside down like this and it should be just fine. The thing that I'm really happy about is that my Randy's Red is actually coming out this burgundy kind of red. I'm extremely happy about it, especially the places where you get a lot of texture just like this. This, this Randy's Red is coming out fan. Fantastic. It's actually turning a variation of red. Okay guys, we're done with all the bottom rung stuff now. Let's go to the middle tier, the stuff that I liked, but not liked enough to like gawk over. This is a cup I've tried a couple times on, and it's one of my more swirly designs. I like this cup a lot. This is what my Randy's Red came out as 
a few times before I actually fixed it. It started coming out this really, really dark black. You can kind of see a little tinge of red in there, but it's not too great. And I know this looks like pitting, but it's not. This is still, still glass right here. This being said, this is one of my favorite kind of handles. This is called my knuckle handle, or as I like to call them, my fat boys. Sometimes it's really hard on the wrist to hold something that's a little bit heavy for a mug, so either my options are make it really light, or make a knuckle support right here, so that all the weight rests on this one knuckle here as you hold it with one finger. Some people like to hold it with one, some people hold it with two, and I prefer to, I, I, I honestly drink my, my, like this. But not everyone drinks the same way I drink, so I make different variations of handles, like this. These two right here are some of my better cups, and I basically just put a clear gloss over these, but I left the bottom raw. Some people like to touch the raw clay body, and it's kind of a style, so I like to do this a lot of times. And you really get to see what it looks like without the clear on it. So the inside's completely glazed into clear, and the outside is as well, but only on the top portion. So the bottom part is just raw, natural clay. You know, there's stories about potters not being able to stretch their clay or their glazes as long as they want to, so what they'll do is they'll only glaze a portion of it, the inside and the outside, so it's still usable, but not use enough glaze to glaze the rest of the outside. And that kind of saves them a little bit of money, especially if you're making thousands and thousands of these. And I like this mentality that you can still make do even with the littlest of resources. So I'm probably going to give this one to a patron. I like it a lot, but I don't like it enough to keep it because the more I like something, the less I'm going to keep it pretty much. This cup right here, if you can believe it, is the same exact glaze. The only difference is the clay body is extremely dark. And because of that, it turns the clear glaze into this darker, grayish, cloudy kind of glaze. I like it a lot, and this again is one of those raw ones that you can definitely touch the bottom a lot. We're going to keep this one in the good pile as well. This one's just fine. Now this one here is a really good bowl with a gorgeous floating blue in the middle right there, and even the potter's swirl. The problem is, this was an experimentational bowl, and I was messing around with feet just to see if I can start making different types of feet, and really what I could do as far as feet go. But there's one spot, let's see if we can find it, that didn't come out all that well, and that's kind of his death sentence right there. This one crawly spot means that I can't keep this, and either I have to reglaze the entire thing, or I'm just gonna chuck it. So we'll probably put this in the reglaze pile and see how it goes, but if you just fail them, it's just throw you away. Which is really sad because this is not rendered non-useless. The inside's still completely usable and it's still completely beautiful and symmetrical and very well crafted. I even left some of my finger lines in there. But it, the, the outside just has this one little blemish on it, which means that it's not good. It's we just have to have standards. So we're gonna put this in the reglaze pile. If it doesn't make it, we're gonna put it in the skeet shooting pile. Also, depending on where and how you erase, skeet shooting means a completely different thing. Okay, you guys ready? Because this is everything that I liked. Most of this is the good pile now. Star date. This is one of my favorite cups. Data beat up Wharf again for some weird reason. This here was an experiment I did and it's definitely one of my favorite cups at the moment. Again, I was experimenting with feet and there's not a lot of glaze right here. You can feel the clay, the raw porcelain body, but I put some glaze on the inside of these little lines here. A lot of you might have seen this on my Instagram account when I posted it and this, this was just one of my favorite things. I wipe off the glaze, a lot of glaze dead on the inside. It's a technique we haven't gone over yet in like glazing, but it's still beautiful and I can still do it without teaching you guys I can do it. But I am massively impressed with the fact that this came out completely pure and white and porcelain and I was still able to keep that color variation on the very inside. This is also definitely one of my favorite cups. Every now and then I get a commission and sometimes I'll save cups like this just so I can get that commission out of the way. But this is definitely one of those ones that I'm keeping for myself. It's gorgeous. It's blue. We're definitely going to know what to do with this in a little bit. And ever since the element change, it's been a lot bluer as far as my kiln openings go. So this is definitely going to go inside the good pile. It has a good grip on it too. This one here, if you can believe it or not, is the exact same type of cup. The only difference is this is brown clay instead of porcelain. And I wanted to show you guys this one because it really highlights the difference in between what glazes can do on different clay bodies. This is the same exact type of glaze. This is also my floating blue. The only difference is it looks a lot darker blue simply because it's on a red stone clay. That is literally the only difference. I dipped it, I handled it exactly the same, and this is one of the reasons why you should always test your glazes on different clay bodies, that being a porcelain, a white stoneware, and a red stone or brown clay. 
I mean, look at these two. To the unexperienced eye, you would not be able to tell this, and this are the same exact glaze. Usually, only really experienced potters can be like, oh, clearly that's only because it's on a darker clay body. But these are actually the same exact glaze. This freaked me out when I was a beginner, but it makes complete sense because the materials that are made out of this clay and the materials inside of this clay are usually different materials and chemicals. Okay, we're on to the top spot now. So these are the top four things that I like the most out of the kiln. And while those things over there that I showed you in the first part of the video failed, I am cool with that because these came out. Boom, big cut, it doesn't fit inside the camera. This one is huge. If this is the size of my hand and I weigh a, a fat boy amount and this is the cup, this is my whole hand. This is huge to me. I like this one a lot. This one is literally what I just showed you with the floating blue. I did a lot of stuff in floating blue. Okay, I might have done too many things in floating blue. The only difference, again, is that it's on a brown clay body, so it's, you know, it's, it's gonna look super, super dark blue. And the, the only reason I wanted to show you this as part of the top spot is simply because I like the way it's formed a lot. There's nothing wrong with it, it's completely fine, but it's just blue. So put it in the failure pile. That's right, I'm inconsistent AF. Get used to that on this channel. Now this cup right here is extremely tiny. <laughs> Again, it's it's something that's very, very small. In comparison to the last cup I showed you, this was my hand. I can I can pretty much just engulf this entire thing in my hand. But I was doing a lot of experimentation with my Tenmuku Gold and my Floating Blue mixed together. This was in a hot spot, I think, because when my Tenmuku Gold gets a little bit too hot and it's held a little too long, it doesn't really give you that gold effect. We have some other cups that have much better gold effects. This is usually what I get, and this is nice and glossy. This, not so much, it's a little bit raw. Don't like it too much, and the only gold's in the middle right here. But this is a fine cup right here for tea. Only problem is it's really, really, really small. Now this right here is one of my favorite glazes. It's called Randy's Red, and ever since I changed my kiln elements, it's been looking a lot more red recently, and I'm really, really in love with this glaze again. See, when I first started getting all my glazes together, I started testing them and keeping the ones that have a very good variation and they work very well together. Randy's Red was one of them, and so when I bought my own kiln and started using it, for some reason, it just turned black, and very rarely did it turn this nice kind of burgundy shiny red here. So I was really confused, but ever since I changed my kiln elements, things have been coming out a lot better. Like that, like that right there. But you can't see it, because we're still doing the other cup. And the only reason this is inside the top spot is simply because it actually came out red. It is incredibly hard to get a red inside of an oxidation kiln without some type of chemical like silicone carbide or oversaturating your reds. And I'm extremely happy that I got this red out of the kiln. And it has a really nice texture. It, it handles well. I mean, this, this is just an overall good medium-sized cup. I like this a lot. We're going to keep this one inside the grate pile. And then there are these three. These three right here are all the same size, color, and clay body. And they are, in my mind, the winners of the entire kiln load. I am extremely, extremely happy with these. But let's go over what I like about them one by one. Most of you who follow me probably already know that I've been having quite some trouble with my Tamuku Gold, and I had a really good hunch it was based on my kiln elements. The fact that my kiln elements were so old means that my temperatures are being held at the end of its cycle for about two more hours, and I don't need a two hour hold on any of my glazes. And I think I was just burning away all the little crystals inside of my Tamuku Gold. The real problem was I was putting a hold on my clay body on accident so long that I ended up burning away all the good texture and this is the result of me changing out my kiln elements. This is beautiful. There's a nice floating blue on the top as you can see most, most of my stuff has been floating blue. This one right here wins my second place because there's a lot more texture. You can see there's a lot of waves right in the middle right here. I might put a line of gold luster right here. And there's a lot more texture all around the cup. As for the other one was just on one side. This one is on an entire half right here and the bottom and there's a lot more texture and the handle just looks superb. Plus the thing that I'm really impressed with about this cup is that the inside is just full of these dolomite crystals. I'm extremely happy with this one. But the one that I'm most happy with is this one right here, and it's primarily because of all the nice color that the handle got, but this entire side right here is a little bit blank, it has good texture, I bet this part was up against the elements, but look at how many crystals I got on this side, it's basically a whole new glaze, oh my god, I am extremely happy with this, and it came out that nice root beer color with a lot of crystals in it, I am, oh man, I'm happy with this, it, it, it's like these two cups right here, had a baby 
these two attractive cups and then just made like a, something that's a tiny bit more attractive but a same version of it. That's, that's the mom, that's the dad, and this, this one's adopted, which, you know, they could choose a better one pretty much. Instead of giving birth to that crappy one that won't pay rent and won't get off your damn couch. This to me is the winner right here. You guys let me know what you think down below in the comments, but this, this is definitely my number one spot. So I was really excited to share with you what happens with brand new kiln elements with my glazes. I am so, so happy that I changed over my elements. If you guys want to see any more of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. I hope this was some sexy eye candy for you, and I will see you Dirty Potters next week. There's a gorgeous floating blue on the top right here. There's beautiful texture right here. And that's a sad thing. This isn't even my favorite cup.